Hello there and welcome back. In my last video, I detailed the assembly of the ASI 6200mm camera along with the M68 off-axis guider and a 2-inch electronic filter wheel into an optical assembly having a back focus distance of only 55mm. Today I'll be powering up the unit to characterize its cooling ability. The 6200 has a two-stage thermoelectric cooling element which can bring the sensor temperature to 35 degrees C below ambient. As you can see from this plot provided by ZWO, the benefit of this is that as the temperature goes down, so does the dark current noise. Although this temperature starts, the temperature noise relationship is pretty linear at higher temperatures, once we get down to about minus 5 degrees Celsius, there's a rate of diminishing return where lowering the temperature further does very little to drop the dark current noise levels. Now why this is important can be seen in this power versus temperature curve. Uh, here we can see that as the temperature goes down, the amount of current draw to keep the camera cold goes up astronomically. So it'd be better to run the camera at minus 10 degrees than say at minus 20 or 25 if one wanted to run for a prolonged period of time on batteries. So for this reason, I decided to set a target temperature of minus 10 degrees C. I'd like to cool the camera down at a controlled rate from ambient to about minus 10 degrees over the course of 10 minutes. Now there is no agreement on this. In looking at many of the fora, such as Cloudy Nights and Stargazer's Lounge, there are a number of folks who say, let it cool as fast as you possibly can. There's another bunch of people who say cooling too quickly will cause delamination of the sensor. And there's a no, whole other group that says the sensor won't be damaged, but you'll wind up with condensation inside of the camera. To play it safe, I decided to just arbitrarily set a 10 minute cool down period. And similarly, a warm up period of about 15 minutes to bring the sensor from its coldest state back up to ambient. Now the way I'm going to do this is using Astrophotography Tool, which is the software I use for imaging, which has both cooling and warming aids. So let's go to APT and take a look at how it works. So before opening up APT, I thought I would try to cool the cameras as fast as possible using their native ASCOM driver settings. In cooling, you can see we come from room temperature down to minus 10 degrees in only five minutes. At this point, the camera does overshoot by about a degree and then slowly brings the temperature back to the minus 10 degree set point. Similarly, on warm up, the camera warms up in about five minutes, four to five minutes, and then once again stabilizes at close to room temperature. So the next step would be to open up APT and see if we can slow these heating and cooling rates down. So I've just opened up the APT software gone to the camera tab, opened it, and connected my camera. And you can see it's connected because this enunciator down here identifies the camera as the ASI 6200mm mono. Now directly above the enunciator are three buttons involved in cooling of the camera sensor. The first one is simply a pull down which toggles the chiller in the camera either on or off. And the second are two buttons which execute a cooling or warming program, identified as cooling aid and warming aid. They're both identical, so let's just open up cooling aid to show you how it works. So when you hit the button, uh, a sub menu opens up, and first you can see it shows the status of the cooler, which is now idle, it's not operating. Uh, just above the start button, we have a bold face temperature, and this is the current CCD temperature which is 23.8 degrees Celsius. Directly above that is the next program temperature target. It says set CCD temperature, which is set to 21 degrees. As the program executes and it constantly changes the temperature target, this number will drop toward our ultimate target temperature. So in order to program this, there are four programming steps. The first is the target CCD temperature, which is the ultimate temperature we're going to go to, in our case, minus 10 degrees C. Then the next two steps are the cooling step and the pause. Cooling step tells you how big a jump the next cooling step will be. 
and then pause will tell you how long it will dwell at that temperature before executing the next cooling step. So for instance, if we're at 25 degrees Celsius and we have this five degree input, what will happen is the camera will change the set point here to 20 degrees, which is five degrees less than 25. And then the camera will try to reach that 20 degree set point. When it finally hits 20 degrees, it will pause five seconds and then drop the set point to 15 degrees. And then it'll try to reach 15. And when it hits 15, it'll wait five seconds and then change the set point to 10 degrees and so on until it hits 10 minus 10 degrees Celsius. The timeout is the number of seconds that the camera will be given. Uh, and if it cannot hit the temperature set point within that period of time, the camera will pause at whatever temperature it's at. So I found that it works best at 240 uh, seconds ensures that I don't have any timeouts uh, during the cool down period. So we're at 24.5 degrees C and we've inputted our program inputs. So now all we have to do is hit start. And you can see it's put in the next set point target, which is 20 degrees C. And the status has changed to cooling. And you notice the temperature is now coming down. So when it gets to roughly within half a degree of 20 degrees C, it will pause and start the pause period of time of five seconds. So we're at 21, 20, 20.5, 20 and now the camera will go into its pause for five seconds, and then you'll see this set temperature drop. It just did to 15 degrees, and now cooling is reactivated. And it'll just keep doing this until it reaches minus 10. So let me stop. So at this point, it's going to take a while, and we'll come back when we're within a couple of degrees of minus 10 degrees. So while the camera is cooling, I thought I would show you a couple of other uh, functions that are associated with cooling of the camera sensor. We go here under Tools and under APT Settings button, we open up a new window, Settings window, and under the CCD tab, we find the CCD cooling delta. This is the tolerance in degrees Celsius that the camera will try to maintain. So at minus 10 degrees, it says that the camera is going to try to correct this to within a half a degree of minus 10. And I would leave it at, at 0.5. I believe the default is 0.6. Unless the camera is really having some problems holding temperature, uh, I would just leave that be. The next box is stop initial CCD auto cooling. When this is checked, the camera will not automatically begin its cooling cycle when connected. If it's disabled, then the camera will start cooling as soon as it's connected uh, to APT. Open cooling aid on camera connection opens up the cooling aid window automatically if this is checked. Check camera temperature on plant start. When this is checked, what it does is if you initiate a program photography routine, it will first check to make sure that you are at the set temperature or below. And that set temperature is in this next line. Camera temperature has to be at least, I have it set to zero. So basically, after the camera is cooling, it will not start the execution of the programmed photography until the temperature drops below zero. It will come up with an enunciator asking you, uh, do you realize you're above zero and do you wish to proceed? And finally, there is a pause cooling during image read, which is for those cameras that generate some electronic noise during cooling uh, so that what it'll do is turn off the cooler while the camera is downloading the, the sensor chip. And I haven't seen a problem with this with my CMOS camera. So those are the cooling functions that are buried in the APT settings menus. 
So it's been about 15 minutes and you can see that the CCD has changed to its final set point target of minus 10 degrees and it's at minus eight now. So once it gets to within 0.5 degrees, uh, minus 9.5, you'll hear a tone and the cooling aid will switch off and it will instead start maintaining the minus 10 degree temperature. So clearly this is taking a long time. It's been about 15 minutes. And what I'm going to be doing next is altering the target CCD temperature, cooling step, and pause in order to try to have it reach the minus 10 degrees in about 10 minutes. So there'll be a couple of inputs and we'll plot those out and decide what the proper program would be. So we're at minus 9.3. Minus 9.4, and there we go, minus 9.5. The aid status has changed to idle, and you can see down here in the log that the cooling sequence has finished. So that's all there is to it. If we were going to be running some, running some uh, photography tonight, we would just turn this aid off, and there's nothing more to do. Uh, when it's time to warm up the camera, we would just hit the warming aid button and just do the exact same thing in reverse. So that's it with APT. Let's take a look a little bit at the various programs I inputted and see whether or not we can reach our 10 minute cool down time. So here's the data I just collected uh, from a couple of different settings of the cooling aid. The first is zero step and zero step is basically as fast as the camera will cool. If you input a step size of zero in the APT controller, what happens is the camera will automatically just follow whatever cooling routine is provided by the ASCOM driver. And that's this blue line. So you can see that basically it comes down to the minus 10 degree temperature in about five minutes, overshoots a bit, and then comes on back. So two other programs I tried was the 10 degree C cooling step uh, with zero second pause so basically as soon as it hits its target temperature it sets the next set point in the controller and you can see this comes down pretty linearly over about 10 minutes and if we increase that step size to 12 degrees c you can see it comes down a little bit faster there's a little bit more curvature once again it cools down in roughly 10 minutes so either one of these settings minus 10 or minus 12 would be fine to cool the camera down in 10 minutes Similarly, if I wanted the 15 minute warm up, once again, the blue line is the camera as controlled by the ASCOM driver. Uh, with a seven degree C warming step and no pause, you can see that it reaches room temperature in roughly uh, 11 to 14 minutes. Uh, and I'm trying to target a uh, 15 minute warm up period. So five degree C warming step gives me about that 15 minute warm up period. So five degrees, six degrees, something in that neighborhood would give me a warm up over about 15 minutes. So that's basically all there is to camera cooling. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is start looking at uh, some work we can do on exposure calculations uh, before the telescope actually arrives. Thanks a lot and clear skies.